Okay, here's our last bunch, 49 to 58. And this is probably the most difficult one for your students, huh? The equation for the volume of a cube as a function of its surface area, right? As a function of. These are these hard ones where we have to have one equation, right, with a single variable. So volume of a cube. I want volume of a cube, which is just S cubed. And the area of a cube, so surface area of a cube is going to be 6s squared, right? Because a cube has six sides and every side is a square. So the area of a square is s squared and there are six of them. So 6s squared. <clears throat> so as a function of its surface area, so this is the hard part, right? We have to get rid of this s over here. So I want to solve for s over there. Okay, so I divide by 6, and then I take the square root. So my surface, my side length, if I were going to find the side length, I would take the square root of the surface area divided by 6. <clears throat> so that's what comes over here, the square root of surface area divided by 6. And I am going to cube that, right? The volume says whatever that is, I'm going to cube it. So that's the formula. <clears throat> for the, the rather the equation for the volume of a cube as a function of surface area. So notice the only variable in here is surface area. Number here, division, square root operation, cube operation. So we have one variable and that variable is surface area. Okay, wonderful job. Let's see what else we got. The equation for the area of a square as a function of its perimeter. So area of a square is s squared right side length squared and perimeter is 4s right s plus s plus s plus s is 4s so i want to get rid of s in my area equation so i need to solve for s in my perimeter equation so the side length is the perimeter divided by 4. So I bring that over here, right? Perimeter divided by 4 is my new side length. And in area, I want to square that. So I'm going to square each of these parts. And the area is the perimeter squared divided by 16, right? Because you need to simplify your equation all the way down. Perimeter squared divided by 16. Okay, the area of a circle as a function of its circumference. So let's do the area of a circle is pi r squared. Circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So we want to get rid of r in your radius, or in your area. So I have to solve for r in my circumference. So the radius is the circumference divided by 2 pi, right? Circumference divided by 2 pi. So that comes up here, circumference divided by 2 pi. And I'm going to square that, because that's area says square the radius, and then multiply it by pi. So let's see what happens here. I have to square circumference. I square the 2, and I square the pi. So I have pi on the outside, <clears throat> c squared over 4 pi squared. Okay, pi is getting squared. Yes, it is. That's a number. It's okay to do that. So now I multiply pi times c squared over 4 pi squared. Now, hopefully you notice we have a pi on top and bottom. So there's a division that can happen. This pi can divide out one of those two pi's, right? There's two pi's down there. So your final answer is c squared over 4 pi. That's the area of a circle as a function of its circumference, not as a function of its radius. Okay, the equation for the perimeter of a square as a function of its area. So we talked about this a second ago, but now we're going to switch it up. Perimeter is 4s. Area is s squared. <clears throat> So the side length is found by taking the square root of the area, right? So I'm going to replace s over here with square root of area. So that's the perimeter as a function of its area. 
right? And up here we had area as a function of perimeter. This is perimeter as a function of area. So P equals something with A that we have. The equation of the surface area of a cube as a function of its volume. So once again, surface area was 6S squared and volume is S cubed. So the side length is found by taking the cube root of the volume. So that's gonna go in here. Six times the cube root of the volume squared, right? And there's nothing we can do because squaring doesn't undo cube rooting. So we have to leave it like that, <clears throat> right? Pretty ugly, but such is life sometimes. Okay, an amorphous blob has a surface area and is similar. Okay, so now we have three-dimensional similarity. These are always found with proportions. Okay, so anytime we have similarity, we're going to be making a proportion. Remember that similarity equals proportion. So we have surface area of 100. And his bigger uh, brother has a surface area of 196. So we have a ratio of 100 to 196. Okay, that's your area ratio. If the volume is 500, then his volume is, so we're looking for the smaller, right? We're looking for the smaller one. If the volume of the big brother is 500, then the volume of him. So we're looking for the volume of the smaller thing. So I need to take my surface area and change it into a scale factor. Now 196, what well, 100 to 96, hopefully you know is um, reducible. Even though 100 is a perfect square and 14, well, let's just do it. What's the square root of 100? The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 196 is 14. Maybe you didn't know that, so your calculator can help you. Um, 10 to 14, well, that reduces, right? It reduces to 5 to 7. So you always want a scale factor in its most reduced form. Because we can take our scale factor and now make our volume ratio by cubing this. So 5 cubed to 7 cubed is 125 to 7 cubed is 343. Now, we have your ratio. We can set up our proportion. So a proportion is a fraction equals a fraction. So we write your ratio as a fraction, right? 125 over 343 equals volume over 500. The volume of the brother, the big one, is 500. So we have this formula, right? This, this proportion that we're gonna solve by cross multiplying. So 125 times 500, that is 62, 500, right? Divided by 343, that's the denominator. And I get a volume of 182.216 when I round to three decimal places. Okay, probably cubic centimeters, right? There we go. So in order to find a volume problem, we need to have a volume ratio. Okay, so you need to adjust your area ratio into a volume ratio. Your proportions need to have the same units. Okay, the side length of two similar shapes is four to eight. What's the ratio of their volume? So once again, four to eight, hopefully you notice that can be reduced to one to two. So we have a scale factor of one to two. You always reduce as much as you can. Four to eight reduces to one to two. So we want volumes. So to volume, we're gonna cube both of these. One cubed is one. 2 cubed is 8. So it has a 1 to 8 ratio for volume. Okay, the heights of two similar shapes are, what was this number? 5 and 8 units respectively. So once again, we have similarity. So we're going to be solving with a proportion. If the smaller shape has a volume of 10, then the volume of the larger shape is. Okay, so we have a 5 to 8 scale factor and we want to cube them to get volume so 125 is 5 cubed 8 cubed is 512 equals the volume of the smaller shape is 10 
and we're looking for the volume of the larger shape. Okay, so cross multiply 125V equals 5120 when I multiply that by 10. So 5120 divided by 125, the volume of the larger is going to be 40.96 cubic units. Okay, so with all of these um, similar figures, you need to have the correct proportion, right? The proportions need the right ratios. For finding a volume, you need to have a volume ratio. And if you need to find an area, you want to have an area ratio. Okay, and then the last one is this wonderful inverted cone problem. Volume of an inverted cone is one-third pi r squared h. Okay, and then we always talked about this other relationship, right? There's always a proportional relationship between your radius and your height. The radius is going to be 4 when the height is 11. Right, so there's a nice right triangle here, and as your height decreases, the radius decreases also. Okay, so all of these ones have a proportional radius to height ratio. Right, they all shrink at the same rate. So if I want to replace r, I have to solve this little equation here. Right, over here, radius over height is 4 over 11. So I'm going to multiply both sides by h, and the radius is always 4 h's over 11. Okay, so that comes in here, 4 h over 11. Right, we set up a proportion. The second equation is always a proportion for these. So this is how we do it. Okay, so now we're going to square. We square the h, we square the 4, we square the 11. 16h squared over 121, right? We square all the parts of your fraction. Pi, one third, and h on the outside. And our last step is to multiply denominators. So 3 times 121 is 363. And on the top, pi and 16h and h squared Let's do it in the right order. 16 pi h cubed. Right? There's nothing that can simplify here, so that's your final answer equation. Volume as a function of its height. Okay, and then I think we had some probability questions later, which I think you all did really well on, um, and some rates problems, but this is the review. I hope you do great on your final exam.